know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. You are watching news from the pew, and this is our first episode. We are down one man. We hope to have the the four panelists back on next week, and we're going to be bringing you all the best topics uh, in the world of politics, culture, conspiracy, Catholicism, and more. Speaking of conspiracy, so we, we already did a little bit of that with, with uh, I don't know, like, it's not really conspiracy theory anymore because that's that term has been destroyed in two years. Because everything that was a conspiracy theory six months later became fact. Uh, so we really- How about this? Did you see that uh, yesterday the NBC comes out saying false flags? This really? Norm- I did not see that. They're literally saying on NBC. They're actually using the term. Wow. Yes, false flag. It's in the mainstream now. What's next? They're going to give Alex Jones a show? I mean, they're that close from doing that. I mean, might as well make him a correspondent. They probably just want to take the attention to themselves with the term false flag so that no one goes and looks up, you know, the, the Corbett report and finds his brilliant documentaries on false flags. And then they're, they're they finally get red billed. You know, <laughs> they, mm-hmm. they want to get the all the clicks off Google from what is a false flag? They don't want them sent to Corbett report, you know? Yeah. No, not, come, not, come not else that says there. trust the government. Mm. I mean, yeah. Corbett did a fantastic video once too, the history of false flags, where he just goes back, documented mm-hmm. history about how kings or monarchs or governments, whatever, wanted to go to war. People did not go to want to go to war. And so they created some incident dressing, you know, other their own soldiers up like the enemy, doing some crime, and then coming in and saying, see, which is why we got to go to war, and then manipulates the public, you know, view of it. Yeah, we got to go to war. We got to do this. And like like Sweden, uh, the United States itself early on, um, 1812, I mean, Mexican-American War, you got a bunch of false flags in that one, documented, known in history. And so the idea that they can come in and do this, it's not far-fetched. It's not ridiculous. It's, it's, it's realistic. I just wanted to feel a little bit more <laughs> beautiful. I, I wasn't feeling as, as attractive as I was, I was feeling, I guess. Well, I mean, every, every blue mask is, a, is a, an accentuator times two. So, Steve, you are, you are a beacon. Right now, for all of us, I'll tell you that much, buddy. Does mask.com ask if you wear a muzzle? Anybody out there? Is Do you know? Not really frequenting those places, so I don't you think I, I'm not the one to be asked. Wear a muzzle? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll swipe right or left, depending. Um, well, that whole thing, let me, the mask thing, let's talk about that real quick. Because with the with everything being struck down and with the UK going back to supposedly normal activities and not requiring face mask and then you have glenn yunkin in virginia getting rid of the mask the separation between the two societies at least here in in these united states between those who have built their entire lives for the last two years around the dedication to exterminating this magical 99 percent survivable virus with their masks and their face shields and all this other stuff and the rest of us it's really really sad to see how these people are so broken they're just so broken in a way that i don't know you could it's like it's like a kid finding out santa claus isn't real that they just they can't get over this this march 2020 moment where they thought the world ended for them and so is there any and of course these people got every jab they took a picture of themselves getting every jab there and all this other stuff so i'm gonna ask a question to three of you guys is there any path back for these people or are they just completely fried? John, you start. Oh my, is there a path back? I mean, so, sometimes it probably depends on how close the, the family was to, to being brought down by some sort of death or injury from what followed in the wake, you know? Uh, that I know a few people at least who were so shaken by stuff like that, that yeah, there there's a chance for them. But um, maybe then for a, Another significant portion, you've got those who were saying, well, uh, I was okay with the first set, but now, you know, having to have a booster every few months, I'm just, I'm not on board. I, I don't know. To be honest, I, I I don't know. It's hard to see uh, without some sort of something approaching divine intervention, how a, a, a significant enough number 
is going to be on board to make a difference? I, I don't know. I really don't know. It's it's really not a question that I'm not I'm not asking I I'm not looking for anybody to have an uh, a 100 way back. I just want people to start thinking about the fact that fam- I have family members too. Every family member in, on both sides of my my mine and my wife's family are jabbed except us. So I mean these are the paths forward we have to take with others and those people who are dedicated to the cult of fear and and all of that stuff. It's just it's something that I think about. Now, I, I live in the great state of Texas, and I still see people in my town driving with masks on by themselves. This long-term impact that has wiped out half of the population. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of people that have just fought in hook, line, and sinker, and now they're so mentally dependent on this love, this this thought process, this uh, what it is that, that they've been told they have to believe by the TV, by the internet, by the news sources, whatever, like, oh, no, we have to do this. There's another class of people that are like, well, I have to do this because I'm going to lose my job. If I lose my job, I'm toast. And I understand what that feels like. I I know exactly what that feels like. You're looking at, oh, well, what am I going to do next? You know, I mean, every time I lost a job or left a job, it was that kind of thing. So I get where you're feeling, especially in uncertain times. But I think the people that have bought into this, that they have to do it, we have to wear it in the car um, like I said, actually, um, like here in North Idaho, you don't see a mask hardly, you know, once in a while or on a Washington plate or something like that. But in Texas, when I was there uh, just this fall, um, I can't tell you how many people I saw with just masks in their car in Irving and uh, Dallas and all around. I'm just scratching my head. It's like, why is this so pervasive? Because where I live, is just this little bubble where nobody cares. Uh, there's practically no massive illness. The hospital has to you know, cook the books to say they're being overrun and all these things. And it's because people want to believe. They want to panic. There's a certain level where they want in on this new system. It's like a similar thing. And like you remember the the original Matrix, we won't reference the current movie. In the original Matrix, what happened is like it gets revealed that people were, you know, most people accepted the program. And they're like at a subconscious level, they're perfectly happy being batteries for the AI system. But then the uh, you know there's there's this handful that aren't that have to get out of it that are actually you know thinking for themselves and rejecting what they're being told and so and I think that comes down to it is that the way that the elites have constructed society itself through media through whatever people have bought into the system that they have to do what the, they they say you know from education upward and this is just another facet of that kind of level of control and that level of uh, brainwashing in a certain way and we're we're here we're a world away from the general obedience you should have to rightful authority we're a world away from um you know the, the notion of being a good citizen they've milked all of that into you have to do whatever your local health official says trust your doctor that's what the last person i'm going to trust but most people that's the first person they're going to trust um, and I think that's really what comes down to it from here. And, and of course, medical, that's groupthink. So all that, you know, you see all these doctors, yeah, yeah, you got to wear your mask, it's safe. But wait a minute, uh, I was in nursing and they told us you never wear a mask, except when you're in the operating room, or if you're in, a, in the room with a patient that has tuberculosis or some other highly infectious disease. Otherwise, you don't wear them because you've got dangers of hypoxia and hypercapnia and um, Legionnaire's disease and you go through all these things. And guess what's blowing up exponentially? Uh, people passing out for hypercapnia and people with Legionnaire's disease, dentists seeing uh, oral thrush, otherwise known as mask mouth. It's, it's, it's beyond, you know, but, oh, no, no, that's not happening. Because if it is, my whole worldview collapses. I can't accept that. And that's what it is. People have bought into it. Steve. Brian, I'll give a, a little plug for Ryan's book, uh, Sparago's Catechism. He mentions uh, the superstitious person is going to be more anxious Ang- so what brings on to that? You'll see the anger coming out. You've mentioned Boris. If you found out, which everyone did, that Boris found- was having wine Fridays every week when he's over there telling you you can't go outside your house, just like Neil Ferguson. He's telling everyone everyone's going to die not to leave your house, and he goes up and shackles with some other mm-hmm. lady. He commits adultery the whole time. You will get mad, especially if you kind of buy into this at first. And in the book, uh, the book on fear is is uh, some English lady wrote it. She mentions that that this guy, they were people were like terrified. This cop mentioned that he was afraid to go outside, uh, go outside his house, and he's a cop that was. He says, "I've been shot at many times. I've been in many fights, physical altercations with people twice my size, and here I am, 
taking my clothes off before I go into the house thinking I'm going to kill my wife. And if you come out and find out that you've been lied to, oh, you talk about just anger uh, coming out from everybody and almost rifles so in a sense. You've been lied to for how long? And you see Boris out there doing this. How many people are wanting him, you know, not to say they want to put him on a pike, you know, like French Revolution days. But there's a lot of parallels coming out of this thinking, what, these people get mad enough? They could literally do something like this. Boris is doing, you know, giving out everyone's, hey, let them eat cake in a sense. Not knowing, not saying that that's, and Ryan can go into the true idea of that let him eat cake idea when we don't, if we don't have time. But in a sense, he's saying that let him eat cake. He's giving everyone back the muzzles and, you know, you can live free again just so that they don't come out and put his head on a pipe because he's literally gaslit them for over a year and a half. Oh, I'm sorry. I got caught. We're going to stop doing this now. We're going to stop doing this. Restrictions are over. You hear in the background. Yeah, about time. No, it's just you see with that Novak again, you know, Australia's on the verge of blowing up because of all the things they've been. I don't know how they're doing it down there, to be honest. Imagine ourselves if you were having what they are going through in the last 16 months. I don't know. I'll tell you why, because they don't have any guns. I'm yeah, gonna, I'll just be completely honest with you right there. Yeah, I don't know how I don't know how they're doing it, but yeah, France, same thing. They won't let him. Again, it goes back to we let one guy do it, stand up against us. Maybe people start backing up that group think. Everyone you to get rid of everybody, put them in on homes, keep them from going to bars. It keeps you thinking I'm alone, mm-hmm. and then you start seeing other people online. Maybe you meet at a grocery store. Uh, hey, you're not wearing a muzzle. I, yeah, I don't believe in this. All of a sudden, you're, I'm not I'm not crazy anymore. It's that whole global NPD thing. Everyone thinks they're nuts because you're questioning reality going, am I supposed to be thinking it's supposed to be dead? I mean, you turn on the local news at the beginning of all this. Uh, here in my area in North Carolina, there was, what, four dead? I remember looking at it going, they're making a big deal about that? I just finished Contagion Myth. He talks about it. there was a graph in March of 2020. 56 people dead the whole month uh, at that time. The flu killed a thousand at that time, tuberculosis, etc. In Italy, and that's what you see the WHO, uh, not WHO, CDC lady coming out saying the um, core morbidities is the problem. It was 0.08% in Italy at the height of their deaths, no core morbidities. The rest, two, two to four, two to five, or anything like this. They're not talking about being obese, being a problem. Hey, water is wet. We're just, it's common sense. No one's thinking anymore. And here it makes me think, too, of the Milgram experiment. If, if uh, listeners aren't familiar with the Milgram experiment, it was a, a psychological experiment done after World War II, where this one you know, psychiatrist said, you know, I want to know why is it that Nazi doctors went along with this? And even, you know, Jews in the concentration camps went along with certain things and did what they're told to do. And so he did this experiment where somebody would be, you know, a teacher, ask questions to somebody on the other side. And every time he got it wrong, he'd get an electric shock, which would increase in severity the more questions he got wrong. Now, what the people asking the questions didn't know is that on the other side, there was nobody. It was a recording. And, but they didn't know that. They really thought it was another guy over there. And so you see, see different things where um, you have uh, – they're asking the questions. They're like, hey, that, that man over there, he's in pain. And, then, and there's a guy in a white coat. He's the authority. No, 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 no. We'll take responsibility. You're fine. You're not responsible for anything that happens here. And so what they found is interesting in the data tables. There were two different things that really shocked me. No, one doesn't shock me, but I'm glad of. But uh, it, it's interesting. One is that when somebody would stand up and say no – I will not do this. This will kill that guy on the other side. It is wrong. And he walks out. Other people see him storm out. And, and the, the preponderance of people would then do the same thing because they saw one guy stand up to the authority and therefore they would go, they would go out. The, uh, whereas a lot of other people just kind of administered the shock and said, well, he's, he's dead and you told me it's okay. But the interesting thing in the, in the Milgram data tables is, is that once the people realized the guy on the other side was dead and they weren't responsible, they almost sadistically increased those shocks going to the other side like well there's dead here's another one zoom and and it's it's noted down there that's actually the really terrifying thing the authority says it's okay to do these horribly wicked things and so wait why not might as well have some fun while i'm at it and that's the really terrifying thing and i think it's in a large measure that's where we are right now john what do you think 
Well, it just as as you all were were talking, I'm thinking of the different quotes that Chesterton has. He's probably got a, a hundred on the same theme, but that you know, if you don't believe in God and especially in the the church that he came to rest in, you're going to fall for anything, you know. And um, I mean, it's essentially what what we have here, and it's what worries me about any. Uh, attempt to to walk it back, and why I don't even trust the not just the modern governments and the and the different media outlets from CNN to MSNBC and what they're finally daring to say now are the CDC and the WHO. It's you know eventually they're going to pull something else because the majority of people not just are are not rooted in the the faith and in in a belief in God, but they become even further you know unrooted from whatever faith they, they may have had before in divine providence since then. And I, I was thinking about it just because I was reading St. Thomas Aquinas's commentary on Job. And he put like the very beginning, he asked this, this excellent question. Why is Job at the very beginning of wisdom literature? Like what, what you read Job and you read the rest of the wisdom literature and the Psalms, you're thinking like, what's the connection here? And he said, is, is brilliant. He said, it's because the way to make everything else unravel in the moral life and in man's intellectual life, and Steve basically said it, and Ryan too, about you know fear, is to take away people's trust in divine providence, right? You take away that trust in divine providence, and then, uh, yeah, you may want to go out and march in the streets, and so it's great to see a few hundred thousand people doing that, but you know what are they going to end up doing in response to it? Finally, you know, or, it, without a trust in divine providence, that they're they're probably not going to be sufficiently convinced that there's something worthwhile on the other side of it all. You know, that, that, I don't know. That's why I'm a little bit nervous about what's the, where, where are we going to go from here with the folks who are fighting back? What, what are we going to do? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That is uh that is something to take into account because if anything, this last two years has been eye opening to a lot of us in how many people who talk a very good game about their belief in God, Catholics, evangelicals, whatever you want to say, uh, wherever you subscribe to whatever your belief is. Um, and then when the church is shut down, we'll, we'll go with Roman Catholics because that's where we are here. Um, and we were like, cool. <laughs> and they were like, sweet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna watch masses on TV. You really can't do that, but everybody was like, fine. So they did that. Um, and then we had endless articles about, well, people aren't going back, yeah, because the bishops were fine with people staying home because now they had venmo for online giving you can give you can give me 20 bucks a week via venmo so you don't even have to show up to put the envelope in the basket and the continuation of the divide even within the catholic church between those who could not wait to get back uh and swore that they would never be shut down again or shut out and those who were kind of like eh, it's all right and where they put their faith and where and where really their 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 testing on a actual spiritual life fell very very far short, uh, because as soon as any hardship came in, they ran straight to the government. Oh, the government will tell me to wear a face mask. They'll get me through. They'll guide me through instead of taking on faith. So it's actually pretty um, it's it's pretty eye opening at this point still to see who goes to church, who doesn't, who wears a mask at church. Who doesn't, uh, and so forth. So, I like that priest that just got he put out a video. Bishop Strickland is uh, backing him up about Father getting, Peter Williams. Yes, getting threatened to be excommunicated if he doesn't take the jab or wear a muzzle, and he's like, "Not happening." I'm, I I'm Father Peter Williams from Holy Family Parish here in Springfield and Chester, Vermont. I'm coming to you today to give you an explanation of what's been happening over the last several months. You may have been aware that in late September, Bishop Christopher Coyne sent a directive out to all his priests and deacons that we were to be vaccinated, or if we chose not to be vaccinated, that we should wear a mask and get tested every other week. The mask would, the mask would be worn at uh, all masses, all other ministries, even when I met with people individually or in groups in the rectory. At the end of that letter, he said that he was leaving it uh, to our honor, to the honor system, uh, 
to either be vaccinated or to comply with his mask and testing directives. And he considered a matter of obedience. I quickly responded to him because he made it a matter of honor and obedience. I quickly responded to him saying that I would not wear a mask or get tested. At that time, he got back to me and said that I had 14 days to comply or he would suspend me. And he cited a canon in canon law that had every had all the penalties from being suspended to being dismissed as a priest um, and even excommunicated. I employed the help of a canon lawyer who is a very good canon lawyer and is known uh, throughout the U.S. as a very good canon lawyer. He uh, has become my advocate and my lawyer. And so now uh, when the bishop and I correspond, it goes through my canon lawyer. I'm coming to you today not to uh, get your opinions or take a consensus about whether or not I should be vaccinated, uh, wear a mask, uh, get tested. People have their own ideas about those things. And that's the way that I prefer to leave them, that each and every uh, person is in charge of their own medical treatments and uh, can make decisions for themselves about their medical treatments. I would say that since COVID has come on the scene, um, I haven't been sick, I haven't gotten a cold, I haven't gotten a flu, and I have chosen to go the route of boosting my immune system and being in the best uh, physical health that I can be. In fact, in that time, I managed to lose some weight and to exercise more regularly because I know that that has tremendous effects uh, on boosting our immune system and being healthy. I have rights. I got a canon lawyer on my side. You know, that's, and then you see secular guys backing priests like that up. There's priests, there's secular guys backing up Vigano, Strickland, anytime a pre father, uh, Goering, he posts a video, it's being shared everywhere on this. People are looking for leadership, especially when you have a collar on. That's huge. And the more, if, if people back them up, you'll see a lot, a lot more happening this way in a good sense. When people are all uh, going nuts about Pope Francis meeting with the uh, Pfizer uh, CEO, I'm going, I'm not shocked. That's How's this shocking? They're all reading from the same three by five card. They're all part of the uh, World Economic Forum. They're all part of starting cold capitalism. He has these guys coming to the Vatican and they're saying that they met uh, privately. I'm, shoot, they could have met publicly. I mean, they could they probably had dinner together. This is not a, that wasn't revelation. I went, holy cow, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. A lot of other people were. It's kind of like these guys getting woke by, man, you see what they're talking about on Fox News with Tucker? Yeah, the guys like Ryan Christian and them been talking about that for months or a year prior. They're now just being allowed to say it, like NBC saying false flag. You never hear that before. Now all of a sudden they're saying false flag could be happening in Ukraine with Russia or Russia doing it to get in there. And that, Oh, now that's okay to say. You say that a month ago, you're a quack. You say what we what what's normal to say now, a year ago, you're you were nuts. You were kicked off. You you were kicked off all these channels. Now it's okay to say it, and people are starting to get their minds wrapped around it. But then, again, it's kind of like what's going on over here. Here comes the left hook. Well, I'm left-handed, so Rocky Balboa type deal. But might be the right hook. Watch out for what's coming with the climate crisis again with the. Uh, carbon credit scores, the credit system coming out, MasterCard, climate cha uh, cl climate cards, the social credit with the cars that they're coming out with that they could shut off whenever they want. These things, you know, the meat, the bug idea. People still think that's wackadoo. And literally every week the WF comes out with a new one or a regular mainstream program about eating caterpillars or crickets are better for you. Now, in a sense, we need to start eating better as father brought up in his video, this has made me work out more. This is a watch what I eat. If we would do this, as they mentioned that in the uh, contagion myth and uh, tra nutrition, tra uh, tradition, nutritional, something like that. I forget, I forget the name of the book. 
if you eat better, you almost are you're, you're going to be fine. They, they notice all these guys that eat these high fat diets pretty much live well, no no problems, and live a righteous old age. They look at people like in the Western world, everyone's obese. This is like the local news channel here going obesity and COVID. Shock! I mean, you're telling me the fatter you get, the wor- the worse your, re- your your heart. The respiratory system, all this, it's like the footballers dying. They're not blaming the, blaming the jab. They're blaming the athlete, even though there's more dead this year than 2009 to this year combined. Yeah. It, well, the whole thing with the, the the fake meat and all that kind of stuff, they, they've they interwoven that pretty clo- uh, well with corporate America. You got KFC, you got Burger King. We've already announced that they're going to have their own versions of those kinds of things as well. Um, they're going to start offering them that. And then you have cars where you have GM and Ford and all these other ones have offered their versions of electric trucks, which is just the dumbest looking things you'll ever see in your life. They have the new Silverado and the F-150 Lightning that are both electric. Uh, and the electric vehicles are great for multiple reasons. A, they can shut them off whenever they want. B, they can monitor them and tax you based on how far and they also have a limited range so you can't go as far anyway now you have to restrict your movement despite what you know they can build 60 billion charging stations across these united states it's never going to be enough if you're going to have the amount of people that drive on a daily basis trying to go to these charging stations and on top of that the infrastructure bill that just came out it mandates that by 2026 every single vehicle has to have uh, tracking uh, in, in it, a full, like real time tracking, uh, you know, in it that can be accessed by government authorities who are perfectly benevolent, of course, and a kill switch that they can shut down your car whenever they feel like it. And, and think about that for a minute. We, you would have to be veritable angels not to abuse that kind of system, really. And, and but that that's what it's going to. Are you exactly. telling me the government are a bunch of angels pooping on cal- cupcakes? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Might not be the case. That, that might not. I think of the George Carlin quote. I, I don't trust the government ever. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either in that regard. Uh, so, John, are you going to be, are you gonna be first in line to go get a uh, an electric truck, John? <laughs> and uh, I'll bike or walk there before <laughs> I'll ever before I'll ever do that. I don't trust. I mean, it, it doesn't take uh, much digging to look at the folks who have been writing consistently. We're talking like for over a decade about. Uh, EMFs and other things that are related to that and kind of uh, the, the way different sorts of radiation can, can harm the human body that they, they've been nervous about these electric batteries and the way the especially that uh, future electric cars would be working and they've been only getting more nervous as the years have gone on. Uh, and besides that, if these people were actually, you know, consistent in their beliefs, they'd be a whole lot more worried. Like apparently the, the guy who left uh, Tesla is you know, about the. Yeah, or, uh, no, no, the one who left Elon, he he, oh. he was the partner with Elon to get Tesla started, but he left it essentially to start a recycling company for the electric batteries because the, uh, you know, uh, getting, <laughs> what are you going to do with the lithium batteries after they're, they're used and done with? They are really destructive on the environment. Th- these people aren't, you know, consistent in anything. They're 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 hypocrites out of every side of their mouth. But the thing that makes me, you know, um, concerned is I want to find out like who are the folks that would be trusted right now as authorities who are actually honest about these sorts of things. Like the, you could say in regard to uh, climate change and uh, EMFs, who are the Peter McC- who are the Dr. McCulloughs, who are the Dr. Malones that, you know, now are, are giving interviews and, and, and teaming up with, with Vigano and, and good priests, you know, Dr. McCullough and Dr. Malone are, who are they that are, that are kind of, uh, that are scientists that are reputable, that could be authoritative whenever they start. Cause it, Surely this has got to be the next thing they're going to try to pull on us is the something to do with climate and, and all the, the carbon taxes. we got to find the good guys out there. I, th- I think it'd be worthwhile. Find the good guys out there, the good scientists out there and authorities and be able to use them, you know, to piggyback on them. And I even, know who I even seen the 60s. Check out uh, Jerry Day. Uh, Jerry Day, his website is uh, emfhelpcenter.com. And he's done a lot of work on this. He's interviewed a lot of professionals and scientists that have worked in this area. So that's it's a lot of advice for helping to detect these things, how they might be affecting you. So that's where I would go, actually, on the EMF subject. Yeah, I've even seen 6G being talked about now. Well, we're not even at 5G yet because uh, we have this article from CNBC.com 
Uh, major U.S. airlines are warning that 5G could ground some planes and foreign airlines are actually canceling flights to come in, despite the fact that the Verizon and AT&T are like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do some stuff with it. They're like, nah, we don't trust that whole thing because um, the executives of these airlines are warning of an impending c- catastrophe because of the way 5G is going to be messing around with uh with these planes so we we can't even get planes off the ground and we're gonna get 6g in there as well now so it's it's um it's once again the belief in technology modernity's absolute 100 percent faith in technology is going to get us out of this and something new is always better and 5g is better than 4g because you can download an app in 0.3 seconds instead of one second so that obviously we need to change everything around in order to do that We'll Rick, it sounds Ryan like you're talking John. about something that Peter, uh, Patrick Wood's been uh, talking about called technocracy. Yeah, I, 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 I don't sound as good as he does when he says it. So, <laughs> Steve, what do you think? What was the question? I'm just talking about 5G in the airports and the uh, the and what's going on with that whole thing. Is that going to be a precursor? The the trouble that that the airlines are having with 5G now is that going to replicate across? Are we going to see similar stuff? across the country uh, as 5G continues to get rolled out. And try to become- yeah, the more I read about it, like Dr. Cohen in that book, uh, Contagion Myth, mentions that uh, just like we're poisoning our bodies with the processed foods and uh, poison waters and you know just everything we stick in our bodies, basically saying we're killing ourselves in a sense. That's why he goes, if even like you eat, if you drink, he mentioned if you drink raw milk, we'd be out of this mess tomorrow. <laughs> and uh you, you throw in cell phones in everyone's pockets and the Wi-Fi's and everything going on. And when they were shut down, you, they were caught. People were caught putting these 5G things on the top of schools, on hospitals, things like that, and especially stadiums. They're everywhere. You have to have them for the for the uh, 4IR, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, to come in when you get the self-driving cars and all this. They have to have that for the speed for it to work. And then you got the unmanned trucks and things like that. But anyways... Yeah, this radiation that he's talking about, he goes basically just imagine shoving some food in your microwave and nuking it and thinking that's healthy for you. It destroys everything in the food that you get. If you have something that's full of vitamins and minerals, it's toasted because the same thing happens in your body when you're around this stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot of people that are sensitive sensitive to it. I told a friend of mine yesterday, I go, watch the Olympics and see if anything happens with the uh, anybody having some problems out there. There's already guys in the... Australian Open that were having breathing problems. Who knows what's going to happen in the Olympics, especially with, under the you know 5G uh, problem in the stadium. I may not be on the slopes. I don't know. I got a feeling there's something with the jabs and all this. It's, this is too quinky dink for me. Before I jump to John, let me just mention that. that's uh, <clears throat> You mentioned that, and the, the Chinese government has decided to not allow – they're not selling tickets. To anybody the only that's going to be like in japan last year it's just going to be the athletes only now they're saying it's because oh well we can't get to net uh covid zero and omicron and all this other kind of stuff but it could be if the the fact that they're 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 trying to limit any kind of potential exposure in this first run i John, miss flurona think? how come flurona only had two weeks i i, I would have liked that over omicron yeah well you at least can sing a song with it like hey flurona you know nothing like that we did have my Corona. I think, you know, it would have been Fluorona 2 electric boogaloo. So we'll see how that goes. John, what do you think about the 5G stuff? Well, yeah, I, I think you're right. The <laughs> you, you may have said it tongue in cheek, but the, how people clamoring to to get it because you can download the app in 0.3 seconds versus one second. I mean, it's it's just this. Uh, and, and, and then you, you nailed it again, too, Rick, when you said uh, the focus on the latest. I mean, it just the the linguist the the kind of nerd factor in me just hit uh the the highest possible because i'm thinking of the latin word for the latest all it kind of has this uh pun to it no uh, you can also say the 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 most new the novissima but the four novissima the four last things uh, Mm -hmm. in in the you know traditional latin terminology the four last things the four novissima you know because it's, it's the latest thing it's the things that will happen at the very end of the world and uh yeah, the, the more you get people focused on the here and now and how quick can I get it? And then that appetite's never fulfilled. Like Father Ripperger's uh, recent videos have son on uh, that, um, the, the search truth. for truth. Yeah, it's on truth. Excellent, excellent. Because he, he says that, that you just, you're feeding those appetites and 
not learning how to say stop to it. Um, and, and of course, never putting in there a focus on the four last things, the the, the true novissima, the latest things that it, it's, um, I mean, it's essentially like what uh, still what St. Thomas was talking about, um, that that focus on the material cause. And, and you know what? The other thing I was thinking of as you were talking, Steve, is that um, when, when you're so focused on the material, on the, the, the little minutia of the material, you, you forget about the, the broader picture. So like modern nutritional manuals, they've got, you know, how many milligrams of this do you have? You have the daily recommended rate. Who knows where those uh, recommended rates come, come from? If you do know, you're probably a little skeptical. But then you're, you're forgetting about kind of just generically, well, I mean, did, did my niacin come from a, a healthy source? Did my calcium come from a, a, mm -hmm. a good source, actually? <laughs> or is it just the amount of ni ni niacin or calcium I have in my body. But uh, when you start focusing on that material cause like that, then you eventually can can be duped into just uh, talking about quantities instead of qualities. And um, yeah, yeah. And then eventually they're, they're going to be able to, to pull another, uh, another fast one on us because we're going to be more and more unhealthy, both spiritually and uh, physically. And that just becomes a vicious cycle because, you know, uh, emotional, psychological and spiritual unhealth ends up, you know, usually showing itself in the body and, and, and very often can be vice versa, even though the saints can, you know, benefit even from uh, the, the suffering. Most, most, most people can't, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of bad that could still come out of um, those sorts of things. And now they're coming out with the carbon uh, numbers by it. So instead of not the calorie count, the carbon count, yeah. but, I know, I know Jonathan read technocracy, but he mentions in it how this is a religion that's coming out and they use, and he's not, he's not a Catholic guy, but he brings up the Holy Father and Amoris Laetitia. Is it Amoris Laetitia? No, Laudato Si. Laudato Si. I'm sorry. My apologies. Mea culpa. And how that's the, uh, the gospel of the new religion, basically, the one world religion they're coming out. And he mentions, I remember a sermon long ago, a father did. When he brings out that group of like, there's a 200 or 300 world religions that are all uniting for one reason. He goes, I don't know what's going on here, but we had to keep an eye on it. But he mentions that Wood mentions that in that group in the book. And you see that with all the, hey, it's okay if you're over here in this religion, you're okay over here in this, as long as you're united to fixing the climate, the worship of the climate all of a sudden. So that it were, that that's how you, all this is coming together in the one, the reset, all that. And Schwab apparently came in because of a Jesuit that was basically talking about the poor and the and the environment and things like that. This has been in the works for so long, and some of us have just been in. We just found out about it last year. We're so far behind the eight ball in trying to figure out what to do. Mm. Well, that's they had to pre-position all these kind of things, so it definitely took some kind of long-term planning. But just because long-term planning and and that kind of uh, uh, for lack of a better planning is set does not speak to a higher intelligence. It just means they know how to organize the actual execution of it. As you've seen, has been bungled. Whether it's Rochelle Walensky at the CDC, who is on seven different shows saying seven different things, to to Boris in the UK having wine parties, to all these other places, the actual execution of said plan has been completely disastrous. But as John was saying, since we have in Western society, I'm speaking about just Western society, since we're fat and weak um, physically and spiritually, for the most part, the Catholic Church is dying in Western in Western uh, civilization, that it was ripe for these kind of things to be, uh, we were ripe to be ordered around because we didn't have anybody, we weren't ready, and we didn't have, our, our pastors weren't ready to do that either. What do you think, Ryan? No, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a big part of it is, is that everything has decayed so much now and, and the focus on the, um, the spiritual life, it's just not there. So so now we're in, in this situation where we're, we're trying to uh, hold on a second. We're trying to recover, you know, the sanctity of the faith. We're trying to hold on a minute. Wait, come back to me. About you got minutes. it. No, no problem. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're looking at the, the fact that things are spiritually weak. Um, I'll just talk about myself. I came back to the Latin mass in July of last year. So I'm, I'm, I'm the newest of all of us to the Latin mass. And, um, 
and 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 what it offers and of course i could repeat the same thing that everybody that come back to the latin max can can talk about but the the idea of strengthening yourself and and keeping your and all of that coming from spiritually from a a life grounded in the faith it, it is absolutely imperative to be able to fight off. It is it is the real vaccine, if to use such a corny term. It is the real vaccine against things like tyranny. It is the real vaccine against things like uh, an overbearing government and and, and and being able to do those kinds of things. So yeah, you mentioned that. I mean, in the uh, if you read Garanger uh, for uh, St. Thomas of Canterbury, he mentions how does Thomas convert King Henry II? Does he do it through protest? Does he do it through this? Does he do it through a violent mob uprisings? He goes, no, he sacrificed himself and prayed for his conversion, kind of like St. Stephen and St. Paul. So in the end, yes, that we can do everything we want, but if we don't have the interior life, uh, this could be all for not. Plus, <laughs> do, we, do we trust in God or not? Oh, mm -hmm. man. And, and you know what? It's funny that uh, St Steve, was it uh, that mentioned uh, Laudato Si and the, the reference to it there in technocracy? Mm -hmm. the, the thing that drew drove me nuts when I saw it come out is that it, it, it quotes basically the first half of that awesome, beautiful poem, a prayer by St. Francis of Assisi, but leaves off like the, the part, the, the last little bit of it's uh, that the, the sense of our life is to is to sing and to praise God. So you know, our life, our entire life uh, should be a, a song. And then you, you're uh, you're pr praying for those who are crying, who are suffering, for those who are are, are being born, and for those who are the, the the poem ends, the prayer ends for those who are about to die right now. And the, you read Laudato Si, the, the papal encyclical, and that part's just not there. It's not. It's not mentioned. It's not focused on. Uh, th that is the part that would have, could have made some of the maybe the, the other decent thoughts in there could have given them some some sense, some perspective, that we're not made for this world, and so maybe some of the you know uh, the, the frustrations of the different human suffering that we encounter, maybe we can find a way to to um, ameliorate them to make them a little bit better. But we're we're meant to be prepared to die well. You know, and just no mention of that in a, a, a an encyclical that was just focused on this world. It was a, it was a lost opportunity by the Holy Father. And and that that hold that last line of that uh, you know prayer by Saint Francis. La data si mi signore per so nostra mota coprale. You know, you know he goes on praise be sister death, and then as he goes on through it, um, you know, blessed are those who will you know find your most holy will, um, you know. But and he gets down to it, um, you know, e quelli che moranno nelle peccate mortali, beati quelli che trovano nelle duecentissime volontà, etc. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. That's that. That's in there, and that's omitted. They leave this out. They publish, you know, the Franciscans, modern day Franciscans. They publish this thing. They leave that part out. Oh no, we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Oh no, we don't want to say anything that's going to be really bad or mean. And so you look at that doesn't have a plan in the in the encyclical named after this entire canticle of St. Francis. It doesn't even have a place as if the spiritual doesn't matter, just purely material. And that's where they're at. That's what they're focused on is purely material. And just linking it back to what we talked about earlier, the COVID stuff, closing down the churches and like, oh, well, Charles Borromeo closed down the churches. Yeah, what else did Charles Borromeo do? Um, he got out there doing processions every single day and about a third of his clergy died and he still did it every single day. It's ridiculous. And then, but then they're like, oh yeah, we can't hear your confession because somebody might get sick. Um, even you know, if I was a priest, uh, I don't care if I get sick and near the point of death to save one soul that is worth uh, if I die, in, in, you know, as a result of some communic communicable disease. Look at Father Damien Molokai. He goes to minister to the people, all the lepers in this colony, knowing that he's going to die there. And he did it. And he felt it was his duty to do it for the salvation of souls. And that's the thing that every law is always recalled to that first law. Prima lex solus in amarum. The first law is the salvation of souls. And that, that's the grounding for everything that we do in the church. That's the whole point. But yet now it's, no, it's for the environment. 
<laughs> for whatever stupid thing they want to throw up there that's in the WEF or the UN, you know, uh, world goals. Indeed, it is. It is um, the modernization. And I know Steve was mentioning the fact that Pope Francis had a meeting with the Pfizer CEO at one point. And the outrage that is expected, but at this point where you're like, it doesn't really shock me when he meets with Nancy Pelosi or he brings in a Pfizer CEO or he does it. It's like, guys, the Vatican is right now. Starbucks is more woke, more red pill than the Vatican because you don't have to get a jab to work at Starbucks, but you got to get jabbed to go into the, to the Vatican. So you just have to look at it that way. Um, doesn't matter the the catholic church is infallible but unfortunately the people who run it are not and i got and, a priest friend that's in italy right now and said that he showed me a, a scene what's going on in a restaurant he was eating at and the cops were going around asking for their vaccine papers the papers papers please that's that's definitely not something that doesn't shock me in that regard that it's taking place there because that's what they're you know, that's the infiltration for lack of a better word that's taken place the the communists and and those who want to see the downfall of the church have made it their mission for 50 60 70 80 years to infiltrate the catholic church and that means take the positions and 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 they have successfully done it at this point are oh. they going to win at the end no but that's just we, how it is we might laugh about what's going on in europe but like in utah they got the nash they were asking the national guard to do stuff like that in utah and mm -hmm. if you look at warp speed it's all a military op so that's not too far down the road you're going to start seeing military guys i think especially like that just happened the other day in utah so that's gonna that's gonna get cranked up as well especially since the documents come out saying we are the new terrorists there's the uh, dod saying watch out for domestic terrorism us basically yeah. people that don't subscribe to the jab things like that question the jab you're a domestic terrorist now indeed all right let's uh let's wrap this up with one last uh topic real quick we'll fire it off to all the, to the three of you lord of the rings the ring of rings of power trailer dropped this uh this afternoon on youtube and the reaction has been one of complete and sheer utter mockery because it is absolutely terrible uh ryan i know you had the most to say so i'll let you go last uh we'll go john steve ryan all right, and my my thoughts are just t t exactly what uh, Steve's and Ryan's will be. I'm I'm sure too. So I, I would just add this: like the the thing you want people to do is to actually read the books. And the Peter Jackson movies weren't quite as bad as what it seems like these will be. But I mean, the the books actually it's it's funny. It it, it more coincides with what something Ryan and and Steve have been saying. Like if the primary law of the church is the salus anim animarum, and there's been an infiltration maybe into the the, the governance of the church and infiltration in, in modern civil society. I promise I'm going somewhere this. It, it has to do with the Lord of the Rings. Like the, the, the point of the Lord of the Rings is like, has there been an infiltration into my soul? You know, am I, am I saying yes to the easy way to vice? And my guess is they, uh, they, they neutered that a little bit already in the movies, a good bit actually probably, but it looks like they've, they've not only neutered more of the, the, the primary message, of Lord of the Rings that that Tolkien was trying to get across, but it sounds like they've even neutered like the good things that the Peter Jackson movies had, which was at least decent special effects. They, they've neutered even that. It's just mm -hmm. neutered. It's bad. Mm. Steve, I never watched or read the the Nerd Bible, and I I never watched any of the movies, so I had literally have nothing for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan, what do you think? Oh man, it's it's one of those things where, uh, from the moment Amazon bought the rights, because uh, Christopher Tolkien held that against that for the entire time he was alive, uh, Bezos kept coming back and he kept saying no, he kept saying no. He dies, and then the family sold out. They 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 saw the, the the green there, so they jumped in and they bought those you know the, the right to to do their own thing, and then they announced you get these little hints out there, and everyone's like, oh wow, this could be great or it could be really bad, but nobody really knew. Then they start dropping the hits. Oh well, we're you know we're gonna do you know hobbits of different races, and uh, you know hey, and there, there's gender diversity to explore in Tolkien, and and you see then don't forget explosion. the intimacy coordinator, right? And and it's got to be you know a coordinated effort because you look at as soon as Amazon bought the rights, all these literary festivals exploring gender diversity in Tolkien, woke this and it's like stuff that's not 
in his mind, obviously. That, that's completely anathema to anything Tolkien stood for, anything he wrote for. It. Um, you get all, all this ridiculous, woke, intersectionalist, feminist nonsense. Like, you've seen it in so many movies. They, they, they corrupted all the superhero movies with it now. And it's going into, into Lord of the Rings as well. I mean, Peter Jackson, I, I have a lot of criticism of Peter Jackson's movies, but it's a legitimate adaptation of the book. And as far as he's trying to get the spirit, he actually was motivated by what it says in the book. Granted, he took a lot of liberties that I would, I dislike. I'm actually going to be on the stream, you know, at some point soon talking about these kind of things more in detail. But so then, you know, you see, you see they're putting out all this nonsense. You know, it's all going woke. One ring.net and their, their Twitter feed goes absolutely woke, as, assaulting anybody, putting out these things like, oh, look at all these right-wingers that are mad because Ian McClellan was Gandalf because he was gay. It's like, nobody was mad about that. Uh, Ian McClellan, obviously, I don't agree with his, you know, his, his personal lifestyle and his choices or whatever. He did a fantastic job playing Gandalf. He probably, there's a few people that could have done it better, you know, except maybe Christopher Lee, so who they had playing Saruman. Right. And so, you know, all these things were, were great, but now they're looking to plunge Tolkien into the sewer of all the you know, the woke intersectional feminist politics, the trans everything, the whatever you name it, and, and which is again neutering, destroying you know, like the notion of grace in the world, destroying the notion of escapism too. The whole purpose of fantasy is escapism from the reality. You, know, you go into it and then you come back mm -hmm. to the real world. And you come back hopefully taking something useful or beneficial with you. That's the point of good fantasy literature and, and a lot of what Tolkien is trying to do. So you get to where we're at now with this, this, this mess from Amazon. And you know, so last year, Peter Jackson actually went because uh, New Line Cinema produced Lord of the Rings. They're now owned by Warner Brothers, which is probably one of the stupidest of all Hollywood companies, followed very closely by Disney. Peter Jackson wanted to do a, uh, a making of the Lord of the Rings documentary that would go into theaters. Now, if you did this on the 20th anniversary of the release of the films, I mean, you'd fill the theaters. You would absolutely, especially with so much garbage that's been out there. I mean, you look at what Spider-Man did because everyone wanted to see that movie because they heard it was good. Finally, something is good. It's not a bunch of woke trash, right? Um, in the same type of thing, you know, they would have filled the theaters. Or again, re-released the, 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 the Jackson's Lord of the Rings in the theaters. They, he wanted to do that. Warner mm -hmm. Brothers said no. Why? Why are they saying no? Because as many problems as there might be with Peter Jackson's adaptation, it's still, it's worlds away from woke, intersexual feminist Hollywood. And the result is that they don't want anything that's going to take any attention away to stand as a comparison to the garbage that Bezos is putting out uh, through Amazon. And this trailer is just really just a sign of it. Like we were saying, I was watching the making of it, and they showed how they're using real as well as CGI effects on the thing. It's like, wait, so you had real effects and you still managed to make it look like saran wrap over your thing. That's how bad these effects are, right? So you can tell you how, how bad it, you know, the whole thing is just going to be a disaster. And it's more dragging everything good into the mud and, and politicizing, which really speaks to where we're at now. You can't deal with anything unless you import your own political views because the politics have become religion in the vacuum of true religion. And the same thing I was happening to Tolkien for that reason. It's the vacuum of true religion that is now being kind of your matrix for your feeding of this false religion, which is your, your crazy politics, your, um, you know, woke, you know, I keep saying that word, but, you know, the feminism nonsense, the, you're going to have a bunch of pink-haired elves, black uh, homosexual hobbits, and uh, who knows what else they're going to throw in there. Whereas Second Age is a great place to tell a story. How did Kella Brimbor? Kella Brimbor in, in The Forging of the Rings, it's one of the most amazing epic things you could possibly do. And instead, who, they're even bringing in, you know, uh, I don't even know how bad it is what they're going to do. But it's just every, every indication is this is going to be utter disaster for Tolkien and Tolkien fans. Well, it's unfortunate in that regard. All right, folks, that's it. We are, we are out of time, but it's time for our last pitch where we're going to let our panelists pitch uh, what, they're, what they're into right now. John. Well, I know you're uh, you're about to go off and teach a course. What, what's all that all about? Well, Mark Twain, you know, uh, apparently what he said, uh, find something you love to do and then you'll never work a day in your life. So that's that's what I'm trying to do. I'll, I'll stick it in there and then maybe we can put it under my name at some point. But yeah, I just got this thing called Ipe Domum, which is kind of a play off the Monty Python Life of Brian, where they're trying to get the Brit to write some proper uh, Latin graffiti on the walls, and you can't get it right at first. Uh, it, anyway, it's uh, that's the website, and I'm just teaching some Latin and Greek courses uh, using Latin and Greek. And there aren't a, a ton of Catholic 
uh, options for that. that some of the non-Catholic groups that do stuff for homeschoolers and whatnot are, are big into it, but very few among the Catholic homeschooling groups. That's, that's just one thing I do on the side and hoping to expand that and maybe do some things with patristics and sacred scripture in the future as well. Awesome. Ryan, what do you got to pitch? You're muted. Sorry about that. I'm going to try to do this and share my screen so I can show. Um, what i've got there we go hold on a minute so i'm going to share my screen is this showing up uh yep. yeah okay perfect so the ascent of the mind of god by the ladder of creation it's uh, the first of several of aesthetical books that saint robert bellarmine wrote so in case anyone knows you know i, I run mediatrics press and we do a lot of the work there reproducing in traditional catholic books and bringing these things out so you can read them um so the ascent of the mind of god by the ladder of creation it's a, it's a nice latin treatise um you know really you know very accessible, I find, which is basically using creation as a meditation to God. And so we just put this out. I just sold through 100 copies, uh, so I got more copies coming in. So it'll still say, if you try to order, it'll still say back order because I just sold through 100 copies of everything, uh, putting out orders. So if you already ordered this because you saw me in another show and I was doing this, then, um, you know, that that's shipping to you. I think there's only three people that I missed because of the, uh, you know, because there's so many orders. So Anyway, so that one, so I've got more coming in. Thankfully, that'll be soon. Uh, I do other, you know, a lot of other books. You can you know, visit at mediatrixpress.com, a lot of Lives of Saints, uh, theological works, translations of like St. Robert Bellarmine, Alfonso Segori, and others. Steve. Well, I got nothing right now. I mean, good, I mean, except for the Catholic business tab, but uh, to pitch the two uh, two brothers from another mother, uh, you got one, you got both of them are Latin uh, geniuses and instructors. So if anybody wants to learn Latin, Contact Jonathan and Ryan, and Ryan's got some Latin books that one no, bought. Contact through. Jonathan, he's a genius. I, I just kind of, you know, hobble along. <laughs> Compared to the rest of it, maybe it's a little bar. I don't know. I just, no. <laughs> but, yeah, if you want to, you wanted some education. Uh, see the see those two guys up. All right, folks. As for me, you can catch me every day from 11 to 2 Eastern time on the Crusade channel. I host the Barrett Brief, Rick Barrett of the Barrett Brief. You can also check out my apostolate, my uh, my side gig. It's called thearmcatholic.com. You can also find me on Instagram, thearmcatholic. I'm a USCCA, United States Concealed Carry Association certified instructor. And my goal with the Arm Catholic is to reach out to Catholic communities and, and introduce men uh, in the ways of firearms and self-defense, home defense, and things of that nature. If you want to check me out, thearmcatholic.com and on Instagram, thearmcatholic. That's All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I highly advise it, by the way. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. All right, folks. Thank you for hanging out with us from News from the Pew, and we will see you next week.